All right, buckle your seatbelts for this one, okay? Uh, Mike Tyson. We all know who Mike Tyson is, right? And we all know that Mike Tyson has been getting involved in growing marijuana. I believe he's got like a 40-acre ranch outside of uh, uh, Las Vegas. But Mike Tyson isn't shy about his love for marijuana. On Monday's episode of his podcast... And we, we, we all remember how Mike Tyson talks, right? Hey, this, this is Mike Tyson. Well, apparently he has a podcast. So I think I'm going to have to listen to that just to hear Mike talk because I don't think there's anything more entertaining in life than listening to Mike Tyson talk. But on Monday's episode of his podcast, aptly named Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson. Okay, I, a mental note to self. I need to save that and go find that. Hot Boxing with Mike Tyson. Uh, the former heavyweight champion shared just how much he spends on the psychoactive drug. What do we smoke a month? He asked his co-host, former NFL player turned marijuana advocate, Eben Britton. It's, it's $40,000 a month. We smoke 10 tons of weed at the ranch a month. Now, I don't know the math on this, but I, isn't 10 tons of weed? You're talking 2,000 pounds a ton. That's 10 tons. You're talking 20,000 pounds of weed. Isn't that more than $40,000? 20,000? It's got to be. Okay, so he, he's, he's exaggerating a little bit, but still, Mike Tyson is saying that he smokes $40,000 a month. No, no, actually, he didn't say that. Let me reread that. Because Mike Tyson said, what do we smoke a month? He asked his co-host, former NFL player turned marijuana advocate, Eben Britton, and then he said, is it? Is, is it $40,000 a month? No, we smoke 10 tons of weed at the ranch a month. That's what Britton said, referencing Tyson's ranch, the boxer forthcoming 40-acre marijuana farm and resort. Is that crazy? Tyson asked, uh, though it seemed he already knew the answer. His guest, rapper rapper Jim Jones, widened his eyes, and he said, Man, damn, Mike, that's a lot of weed. He said, That's nonstop, every second weed right there. Tyson's latest career pivot might be his most lucrative to date. Uh, Because shortly after the California recreational marijuana laws went into effect in 2018, he launched Tyson Ranch, which sells nine strains of cannabis flower, potent extracts, and soon edibles. So, in addition to the production facilities and the luxury resort, it's set to feature an edible factory, amphitheater, and glamping glamping campground. So, if you want to take a vacation with Mike Tyson, you go out there and go glamping on his 40-acre marijuana ranch where he's smoking 10 tons of weed a month. I don't know those numbers. I don't know if they add up, but he's claiming 10 tons of weed. And are you going to argue with him? you Are going to argue with Iron Mike, the guy that will just take one look at you and beat you down and, like, 0.5 seconds. I'm not going to argue with him. If he says it's 10 tons, all right, Mike, it's 10 tons. Yeah, I smoke 10 tons of weed. That's a lot of motherfucking weed. I smoke 10 tons. 10 tons of the motherfucking weed. That's why I do. You got a problem with me smoking 10 tons of weed? Huh? Huh? You got? You want to say something? You want to talk some shit to my face that I don't smoke 10 tons of weed? Because my, this motherfucker right here, I got tigers and shit. I got tigers and I smoke 10 tons of motherfucking goddamn weed. All right, Mike, I believe you. I'll just believe that you smoke 10 tons of weed. I mean, somebody's high as fuck if they're talking that they're smoking 10 tons of weed. But I'm going to leave Mike alone. I'm going to let it be. I'm going to believe him. I choose to believe. Yeah, you better believe, you fucking cracker. I'll beat your fucking ass. I smoke my 10 tons of weed. Fucking you. Fucking you. You fucking cracker. It's August 14th. Wednesday. Wednesday, August 14th. Yeah, we had a nice show last night. We had Mr. Dan Berman on the show. Dan Berman, Mr. Taxation is Theft himself. It was a really cool show. I don't even know we named that show, but it's the show that was uh, recorded last night on the 13th of August. Yeah, Dan came in. He's a cool dude Yeah, with the big hat, the whole nine yards, and talking about taxation is theft. And, you know, one of the funniest things that he was talking about, he was talking about how uh, the government wants to charge you for everything and how he kind of, you know, fights against it. And one thing he was talking about is that he does he has not had a driver's license. Now, he was born in Los Angeles, but he hasn't had a driver's license in years, and he never registers any of his cars. And if he gets pulled over and if he gets a ticket, he said, they're not going to arrest me. I just, you know, I just go and pay the fine and still cheaper than having a license and all the uh, registration. He does have insurance. He did say that he does have insurance. But, um, yeah, as far as when it came to uh, registration and registering his vehicles, he's like, nah, not even worried about it. Not going to do it. So that was interesting. Uh, You can check that show out. You know, I really need to find out what that show was called or what we ended up naming it because I wasn't really... 
I mean, I wasn't too intoxicated when we ended the show, but obviously I don't know what we called the show, so I need to check that out. Let me see real quick. It was called, uh, well, I don't have it there. Let me check in iTunes. We're on iTunes, Radio Underland. We're in iTunes, too. Um, hmm. Well, let's see. Uh, did it not upload? Did we not? No, we had to have uploaded it. We had to have. Now I've got myself second guessing myself. Let me check out the Facebook real quick. And you guys just chill out to this music. This music gets me all relaxed. I was listening to Daft Punk before I went to do this. And I really wish I could play Daft Punk. But of course, you know, it's copyrighted and all that kind of stuff. So I'll get a YouTube fine. It's not like I'm making any money off this. I mean, so I could play it and not be uh, 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 qualified to make money on any of these shows. But maybe I just should. Screw it, right? Uh, okay, Taxation is Theft with Daniel Berman. That was the name of the how, how could I forget that? That was the name of the episode. Taxation is Theft with Daniel Berman, uh, Libertarian presidential candidate. So you can check that out. That's the last show. Um, if you'd like to support the show, you can definitely do that at patreon.com slash radio underland. And that's where you can uh, check us out and uh, help us out, you know, because we do this for free because it's what we do. Uh, it's a passion of ours, you know, me, Steph, Tom, Missy. We do it because we want to, but, you know, it would be nice to, you know, pay for some of the bills because we do have a lot of bills when we're doing this. So if you'd like to help out, you can definitely do that on patreon.com slash radio underland and Patreon. That's P A T R E O N dot com. You know, what's funny is we had, when we had Dan Berman on last night, uh, another, a state legislature from, uh, uh, New Hampshire, he called in on the show because he was watching the show because Dan Berman was on there, and he's another presidential candidate, so he wants to come on the show. And then I got hit up today by some guy named uh, Jedi Alchemist, and I'm sure that's just a fake name, but but he he's he, <laughs> I was looking over his profile, and he's a healer, a life coach, a uh, author, and uh, he was messaging me, message me, messaging me today, and he wants to come on the show too. So, well, I, th- I think I'm more interested in the other things that Jedi is into. Like, how did he get the name Jedi? That'd be one of the first things that I want to ask him. Uh, but he's got a lot going on, and I think uh, with that, I think he could be a very interesting guest. Uh, I'm not too sure about him being a presidential candidate, but I mean, he can explain that too. But I'm more interested in the rest of his life. You know, life coach. Get him on there, life coach me. I could use some life coaching. I can tell you that. You know what else I could use? I could use some uh, because we doing we've been doing a lot of these shows with these libertarian presidential candidates, and now it looks like we're gonna have a total of four of them coming on: uh, Kim Ruff, Daniel Berman, and the other two that I was just talking about. What we really could use is we need some weight from the other side of the discussion. We could really use some uh, more uh, leftist, liberal points of view. I think the only liberal point of view that we have that listens to the show are, are that at least comments on the show and talks is uh, my good friend Aaron, Aaron and Chris. Uh, she's always chiming in on the comments when we're doing it live. And uh, she's definitely got her liberal point of view. But I, we could definitely use some more. You know, Ty420 was hitting me up today and he's all, you got to know some liberal people uh, to set up a debate with him, you know, so we could have a little debate action going. And I'm I'm thinking, and I, I know liberals, but I don't know any that would be willing to come onto the show. Um, I did reach out to a good friend of mine, Chris, Chris Decker and Chris Decker. He was with Greenpeace and everything, but Chris Decker, he's, he's a, he's a unique individual because he's not really, he's not really a liberal leftist, although some things he believes are very liberal and he's definitely not conservative, but the guy has convictions. The guy definitely has convictions. And when he's very, when he has strong convictions about something, he's not afraid to open up his mouth and discuss it loudly. Um, so I think actually in one of the u- upcoming shows, we're actually going to have on Ty420 from Philadelphia, the terrible conservative, and we're going to get Chris Decker on, and they're actually going to debate about what's going on with ICE and open borders in our country. Yeah, I know, it's political, but I want to see two grown men fight over that. I know Chris Decker, man, he says he says he basically says like uh, what's going on right now in America is the same as when the Jews were being taken you know, during, uh, the Holocaust. And if you want to do something about, you need to stand up and protect these people and not let them be taken. So that's the way that Chris Decker looks at it. And then Ty 420 looks at it. Oh, this is just people doing their jobs. They broke the laws. They're here illegally. They need to get the hell out. So I am very curious to get these two guys, which have big mouths, 
they're not afraid to open them and have them go at it talking about ICE and open borders and what's going on in the uh, country. So, yes, it is political, but I'll tell you what, for me, it's going to be entertaining as hell. It really is. And uh, so we've got that coming up here shortly. I think on uh, this next week's show, we have the, um, I forget her name, but basically she has the uh, a very large Facebook group that uh, is into uh, the Mandela effect. Now, I'm going to try to explain what the Mandela effect is. Um, well, actually, I'm not going to explain it because I'm not smart enough to explain it. I'm going to read a little article about the Mandela effect so you know what it is. The Mandela effect refers to a situation in which a large mass of people believe that an event occurred when it did not. Looking at the origin of the Mandela effect, some famous examples, as well as some potential explanations for this strange confluence of perception, can help to shed light on this unique phenomenon. So the origin of the name Mandela effect began when it was first coined in 2009 by Fiona Broom when she published a website detailing her observance of the phenomenon. Broom was at a conference talking with other people about how she remembered the tragedy of former South African President Nelson Mandela's death in South African prison in the 1980s. In fact, Nelson Mandela did not die in the 1980s in a prison. He passed away in 2013. As she began to talk to other people about her memory, she learned that she was not alone. Other people remembered seeing news coverage of his death, as well as a speech by his widow. Now, Broom was shocked that such a large mass of people could remember the same identical event in such detail when it never happened. Encouraged by her book publisher, she began a website to discuss what she called the Mandela Effect and other incidences like it. Now, here's some examples of the Mandela Effect. The story of Nelson Mandela is not the only example of this type of false group memory. As the concept of the Mandela effect grew along with Broom's website, other group false memories began to emerge. One of them is Henry VIII eating a turkey leg. People had a memory of a painting of Henry VIII eating a turkey leg, though no such painting has ever existed. There have, however, been similar cartoons created. And here's one that all the Disney fans should know and all the Star Wars fans, Luke I am your father. Well, if you saw Star Wars Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back, you probably remember Darth Vader uttering the famous line, Luke, I am your father. You might be surprised to learn that the line was actually, No, I am your father. Most people have memories of the line being the former rather than the later. And here's another one, for, especially for the Disney fans. Mirror, mirror on the wall. If you watch The Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, you probably remember the line, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? You may be shocked to learn that the line actually began with the phrase, Magic mirror on the wall, instead. Uh, Some other examples of the Mandela effect are Oscar Mayer. There's some controversy over the spelling of the famous brand of hot dogs, Oscar Mayer, M-A-Y-E-R, Wieners. Some people claim to remember the brand being spelled M-E-Y-E-R instead of M-A-Y-E-R, which is the correct spelling. Where is New Zealand in relation to Australia? If you look at a map, you'll see that it is southeast of the country. However, there is a community of people who claim to remember New Zealand being northeast instead of southeast. And another big one that a lot of people remember or remember incorrectly is the Bernstein Bears. The famous children's book series of the Bernstein Bernstein Bears, B-E-R-E-N-S-T-A-I-N Bears, is not immune to the Mandela effect. Many, Many people report remembering the name being the Bernstein Bears, spelled with an E instead of an A. This is similar to the Oscar Mayer issue and hints at perhaps an underlying cognitive reason for the Mandela effect instead of parallel realities as some people believe. So, uh, okay, and here's the one that I want to talk about, the Shazam. One of the most well-known examples of the Mandela effect is the collective memory of a movie called Shazam that starred the actor-comedian Sinbad in the 1990s. In fact, no such movie exists. Although there was a children's movie called Kazam and some other coincidence that could help explain how this movie became created or remembered in many people's minds but that's the one of the mandela effects that when i look at it that is the one that i uh i swear to god i remember the movie shazam 
with Sinbad. But apparently it never existed. And that is the Mandela effect. And it, it, it gets crazier than that because uh, one of the explanations what people use to explain the Mandela effect are alternative realities. Okay. So one theory about the basis for the Mandela effect originates from quantum physics and relates to the, to the idea that rather than one timeline of events, it's possible that alternate realities or universes are taking place and mixing with our timeline. In theory, this would result in groups of people having the same memories because the timeline has been altered as we shift between these different realities. So, um, <laughs> I don't know, that's pretty far out to me. And one of the other uh, explanations of these cognitive group memories are is, is called false memories. And when that is, uh, a more likely explanation for the Mandela effect involves false memories. Before we consider what is meant by false memories, let's look at an example of the Mandela effect as it will help us to understand how memory can be faulty and may lead to the phenomenon that we are describing. Who was Alexander Hamilton? Most Americans learned in school that he was a founding father of the United States of America, but that he was not a president. However, when asked about the presidents of the United States, many people mistakenly believe that Hamilton was a president. Why is that? Well, if you consider the simple neuroscience explanation, the memory for Alexander Hamilton is encoded in an area of the brain where the memories for the presidents of the United States are stored. This means by which memory traces are stored is called an engram, and the framework in which similar memories are associated to each other is called a schema, S-C-H-E-M-A. So when people try to recall Hamilton, this sits off the, the the neurons in the brain close in connection to each other and it brings with it the memory of the presidents though this is an oversimplified explanation it illustrates the general process so i don't know what your thoughts are about the mandela effect but that is what's going on and that's how people uh, are explaining the mandela effect and that's what we're going to be talking about this next tuesday on a radio underland live uh tuesday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You can watch it live on Facebook.com slash Radio Underland. So that's what's coming up. Now it's time that I need to get to some actual uh, real news stories. I was just reading the news, and there's a guy over in the Soviet Union, and uh, he 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 had just, he's 66 years old. He was out picking mushrooms, okay? So this guy in the Soviet Union, he calls his wife, and he, he freaks his wife out because he pretends that while he's out picking mushrooms that he was mauled by a bear. OK, it was all BS. He just made up the, the freaking phone call, scared his wife to death and pretended that he was mauled by a bear. Wife gets mad. He hangs up the phone and, and he proceeds to pick his mushrooms. Well, unfortunately for him, around the corner comes a brown bear and the brown bear mauled him, ate him and killed him. Bad karma for playing the joke. I don't know, but I'll tell you what, man, um, how ironic is that? You know, uh, that that definitely wasn't in Alanis Morris's, Morissette's song, you know. It's like a bear mall when you're picking mushrooms. No, she never did that. But I'll tell you what, man, that is a crazy story. The guy's name was Alexander Kornyev. And this was in Russia, about 5,300 miles east of Moscow. And yes, he was 66 years old. And the only thing he had to defend himself was a pin knife. And he tried to defend himself against a powerful animal, but was unable to do so. And he was eaten alive. He was a uh, retired railway construction worker. So you believe in that? You think that was karma? You think that this guy was like freaking his wife out, causing her to have a panic attack, and uh, it came back to bite him in the ass? Or was this just a, 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 a crazy chain of events? Do you even believe in karma? See, sometimes for me, I don't even know if I believe in karma. I really don't. I don't. I, a lot of people do. A lot of people don't. I don't know. I really don't know. Well, <laughs> okay. In other news, I don't know if you guys saw this one, but there's some guy that's running around and okay, he, he wears these blue like coveralls, like a mechanic's coveralls, and he's got a TV for a head. You know, like if he, if he cut a hole in the bottom of an old, you know, CRT TV and he puts it on just like a hat and he's looking through the screen, right? So this guy, this TV guy is going around and he's delivering TVs and just leaving them on people's front steps. Who's this dude wearing, of all things, a television on his head? 
And why in the world is he leaving an old-fashioned box TV on a stranger's front porch? It's a mystery that's baffling police outside Richmond, Virginia. It usually happens around midnight, and TV Dude is apparently fully aware he's on surveillance video. <laughs> well, if that's not a crazy story, I don't know what is. Mike, Mike Tyson, are you still there? <laughs> you, uh, uh, yeah, the motherfucker better not drop off a TV at my ranch. I'll fucking change his motherfucking channel with the fucking TV head. You want to leave us some TVs on my fucking, my fucking front porch? I'll fucking, I'll fuck you up, man. I'll fuck you up in your TVs. I'll adjust your horizontals and your verticals. I'll fuck you up. I'll change your channels, and I'll I'll fucking, I'll give you a motherfucking commercial break. That's what I do. You leave them fucking TVs at my house, I'll fuck you up, man. I'll fuck you up. Now I gotta go smoke some more weed because I smoke 10 tons of weed a month. That's a lot of fucking weed. So I gotta go mill out. I gotta go play with my fucking tigers and smoke my weed. Okay, I gotta get back to some serious news and stop doing my fucking horrible Mike Tyson impersonation. Uh, but there's a representative, Steve King. And uh, he's under fire because he said this, and I quote, would there be any population of the world left without rape and incest? Okay, so this Republican representative, Steve King of Iowa, a uh, uh, question on Wednesday, whether there'd be any population left on earth, if not for rape and incest. And he said, and I quote, what if we went back through all the family trees and just pulled those people out that were products of rape and incest? Would there be any population of the world left if we did that? Now, that's what he said in Urbandale, Iowa. And that's according to a video posted online by the Des Moines Register, which was the first to report on the remarks Wednesday. And then he also said, considering all the wars and all the rape and pillage that has taken place, I know I can't certify that I was not a part of a product of that. Well, I mean, he's probably right. Uh, that's what King said. And he also said, I like to think that every one of the lives of us are as precious as any other life, he added. The remarks came as King was defending not, uh, not allowing exceptions for abortion in cases of rape and incest. The Iowa Republican is a controversial and polarizing figure on Capitol Hill who has a track record of making racist comments that have generated backlash across the political spectrum. I'll fucking rape his ass. I'll fucking, I'll incest the, I'll incest the shit out of that motherfucker. He wants to talk about rape and incest and all that. I'll fucking, I'll incest his ass. That's what I'll do. Okay, shut up, Mike. We got to get back to the serious news. I swear, this is why. I can't record a show at 1030 at night when I've been working all day because it just goes down the shitter in a hurry. Uh, but we do have audio of his actual remarks. What if we went back through all the family trees and just pulled those people out that were products of rape and incest? Would there be any population of the world left if we did that? Considering all the wars and all the rape and pillage that's taken place and whatever happened in culture after society, I know I can't certify that they're not part of a product of that. So basically, these comments have infuriated the Democrats, and they're asking for his reg uh, resignation. Of course, that's what they're going to do. They're going to jump all over this. Um, well, eh, I, I can't believe he's using this as a as a stance to uh, against abortion, talking about everybody being raped. Anyways, it's in the news. It's what's going on in this place, and uh, that's what we got there. So in Oakland, Oakland, California, and uh, Oakland, California, which has been a hot spot for crime for years. Um, people are taking crime fighting into their own hands. There's an anonymous effort to shed light on muggings in the city, uh, specifically in the North Oakland. But the warning signs popping up around the neighborhood aren't sitting well with some residents. They believe they're doing more harm than good. So basically what somebody's doing is going around the neighborhood and all the telephone poles are putting on signs that says that say, warning, be alert. Those are on bold on the top of it. And, uh, and, and, it's, and it also says... Um, Muggings occur in this neighborhood and Oakland PD cannot protect you. Be alert. So, I mean, they're just being honest. I'm sure it's pretty bad up there. And uh, if citizens are saying that, trying to warn people in the neighborhood to be careful because a lot of muggings are happening in Oakland. Uh, but apparently some of the people are pissed that these signs are getting hung in their neighborhoods. Fucking, fucking, fucking muggers. Fucking muggles. I hate them. I hate every part of motherfuckers. The muggles. I hate the mug. No, no, Mike. It's muggers, not muggles. I, I know. I don't like Harry Potter and the fucking the muggles in the movies and shit. I'll beat the shit out of them. That's what I'll do. No, Mike. It is muggers, not muggles. Oh, fucking. Well, I'll beat the shit out of the muggers too, man. I fucking think I gotta go smoke some weed. Okay. And uh, yeah, uh, I don't think this episode is ever gonna see the light of day because I'm. Uh, I'm pretty much ashamed of myself right now for making fun of 
uh, Iron Mike Tyson. If he ever gets word of this, I'm sure he'd kick my ass in a heartbeat. So I better, I'm not even going to tag Mike Tyson in this episode because I, the last thing I want is some guy with a tattoo on his face and a tiger that's smoking 10 tons of weed coming after me. I don't need that kind of drama in my life. So I'm going to retire Mr. Mike Tyson. Yeah, you better retire Mr. Mike Tyson because I'll fuck you up, man. I'll fuck. Okay, I'm just going to let it go. I'm going to stop. Now in more interesting taco news, a California man dies after competing in a taco eating contest. Now, this is up in Fresno, California. Authorities say a man died shortly after competing in a taco eating contest in Fresno. Fresno Sheriff spokesman Tony Body says 41-year-old Dana Hutchings of Fresno died Tuesday night shortly after arriving at a hospital. Bodie says an autopsy of Hutchings will be done to determine a cause of death. It was not immediately known how many tacos the man had eaten. The contest was held at Chikansky Park in downtown Fresno. The park is home to a minor league baseball team. Tuesday night's competition allowed amateurs to qualify for Saturday's World Taco Eating Championship to be held at Fresno's annual taco truck throwdown. During the 2018 Taco Eating Championship in Fresno, professional eater Jeff Esper downed. Okay, you're going to take a guess on how many tacos this guy, the the reigning champion, downed? Uh, It's a lot. Anyways, he downed 73 tacos in eight minutes. Uh, So this person was trying to uh, get into the finals of the Taco Eating Championship and apparently died while uh, eating tacos at the baseball stadium. So be careful out there. You know, there's some tacos out there that can kill you, uh, apparently, if you're eating, trying to eat like 73 of them. Uh, But, you know, that overeating stuff. I know we did the death taco challenge one time, and I didn't even taste the stuff. Uh, But everybody that was eating those death tacos, they look miserable as hell. And the death taco is a taco that you can get downtown Riverside at Jin Kayaki, and they make it up for you. They make them up for you. You have to sign a waiver. And I I saw Steph. I saw Raymundo. I saw Jeff eat those things, and uh, they looked miserable eating those tacos. I think Raymundo, he's eating all kinds of hot stuff, like the Carolina Reaper and all that kind of stuff. And he said that eating the death taco was one of the worst things that he had eaten. I don't know if it's just because it's heat, you know, in the taco itself or what, but it does not look good. But anyways, a guy in a taco eating competition has died. Uh, So, uh, so next time you're at uh, Taco Tuesday dump a little meat out of your taco on the ground just like you pour the gin you know the juice on the you know on the ground for the fallen homies well for the fallen taco eater make sure you you know douse a little lettuce and uh lettuce and meat on the ground Uh, pour it out for the homie that has failed and died trying to eat tacos now this is probably one of the most disgusting stories i've read today but in bozier city louisiana and, of course, as I try to read it, the article goes away. Okay, there it is. A police officer from Bozier City Police Department was arrested in December for, filling, for filming an unspeakable act with an animal. Officer Terry Yetman, who's 38 years old, has been charged with multiple counts of sexual abuse of animals. And he produced the evidence himself. Now, however, it appears that one of his animal victims was his own police canine. Over 20,000 people have since signed a petition for his prosecution. Thousands of in defense of animals supporters were moved by this horrific case and want to see justice done. Dahl Stanley, campaign director for the In the Defense of Animals, said, A healthy society protects its innocence. Vulnerable children, animals, elderly citizens, sexual predators must be made to fear the loss of freedom and a stinging financial impact. We call on District Attorney Marvin Schuller to take zero-tolerance stance on bestiality and prosecute Yetman to the fullest if he is found guilty. According to the Louisiana State Police, Yetman was arrested on December 19th and charged with 20 counts of sexual abuse of animals by performing sexual acts with an animal and 20 counts of filming sexual acts with an animal. Louisiana State Criminal Code 89, Crime Against Nature, carries a first offense penalty of a maximum of $2,000 fine and or a five-year prison sentence, psychological evaluation, and no contact with animals for a minimum of five years, according to the press release. Yetman was decorated officer on the department's domestic task force. The task force was responsible for championing the rights of domestic violence victims and their families. And just last year, Yetman was awarded the 2018 Trey Hutchinson Award for his work on the force. So, yes, you heard that right. This guy was uh, arrested and he had 20 videos of him having sex with animals. 
and this was a guy police uh yeah i don't know what to think it's disgusting it's gross uh this guy has some serious issues and that's probably the most disgusting story i've read today uh he needs to go i don't know what he needs to do but that's just filthy that is filthy and fuck man i mean you know if, if don't people get like extremely like like a harder sentence if they do something to a police animal like if you shoot a police animal or something like that it it, it carries a higher uh penalty than just like shooting a regular animal or, or, do, or abusing a regular animal if you abuse a police animal it's almost like i don't know i i, I just i don't even know what to think but they need to lock this guy away they they, they pff, there's, they already got the video evidence. Do we really need to really drag this out? Just get this guy into court, arrest him, lock him up. And how do they even treat these kind of guys in prison? I mean, okay, uh, you, you mess with little kids. Yeah, you're going to get shanked in prison. But if you're a dog fucker going into prison, I mean, we're, I don't even know what to think. But the guy is freaking disgusting. Uh, that's all right. We got to move on to the next news story. Now, in a, a record-breaking attempt at being the most spoiled brat ever, uh, a young driver allegedly pushed into a river his BMW he got from his parents because he wanted a Jaguar. The man named locally only as Akash is alleged to have pushed the brand new car after he got upset it was too small for him and his pals. A video shows the car sinking beneath the water in Yamanagar, Hirana, uh, state in northern india it had to be pulled out using a crane locals said that he jumped out of the vehicle just before it reached deeper water and onlookers helped him to safety uh so this kid now i i, I don't know if you guys watch the same tvs that i do but whenever i see like a, a a bus driving in india and it's got people jammed all over the inside they're hanging off the outside they're sitting on the top and you see a guy driving by on a little tiny scooter and there's like eight people jammed on the scooter and this motherfucker he had a freaking brand new bmw and he can just jam all of his friends all over the car he needs something bigger i mean what a spoiled brat man you're gonna push a brand new bmw into a river because you wanted a jaguar um what a douchebag but that's in the news it happened it showed up in the news two days ago and that is the reality a kid so spoiled that he had to push his bmw into the river because he wanted a jaguar what a fucking asshole now this next story this happened probably about oh about five miles from my house and i want to read you this story in its entirety and you tell me whether you believe this guy or not People shopping in Hesperia on Tuesday evening feared the worst after a man armed with a shotgun was seen walking near the Walmart shopping center. It happened at about 7.47 p.m. on Tuesday, August 13th, 2019, at the 13300 block of Main Street in Hesperia. Hesperia Sheriff Spokesman Edgar Morin told Victor Valley News deputies uh, were called to the O'Reilly's Auto Parts store after a man with a black firearm entered the location. Deputies made contact with a man identified as John Sebastian Waller, 48 years old, inside the O'Reilly's. Waller told the deputies, now here's his story. He told the deputies that he was involved in a verbal argument with his girlfriend in a nearby parking lot. He then exited the vehicle and grabbed a loaded shotgun out of the truck, out of the trunk of the car because he did not want his girlfriend to make any irate decisions. With the gun, that is. Waller unloaded the gun and threw the ammunition in a nearby bush. That's what this guy's story is. And then he said, when Waller attempted to place the unloaded gun back into the trunk, his girlfriend sped off, leaving him there with the gun in hand. Now, at that time, Waller then decided to walk across the street to the O'Reilly's to have a staff member place the gun in a safe place. This is according to the police. That's what they're saying this guy's story is. Uh, people in the busy shopping center and others driving by saw the male with his gun and caused many of them to assume the worst. I thought he was planning to attack the Walmart, said a bystander. You just never know. That said another person. Um, with the way things are going everywhere, you have to always be alert, stated a woman who was asked not to be named. So uh, Waller was arrested and booked into the high desert detention center for a code violation. I'm not going to read the code. It's too long. Uh, but the code violation was carrying unloaded gun in public. According to the public booking logs, Waller was uh, he was released and is no longer in custody with no scheduled court appearances. So, I mean, if the guy's telling the truth, I mean, it's just a bad chain of events. But 
Uh, it was an unloaded shotgun. He's walking around with it. He's not trying to conceal it, but I guess there's a code that you can't even walk around with a shotgun. So I don't know if I buy this guy's story or not. It seems pretty outrageous, but it doesn't look like they arrested. I mean, they did take him in, but it, he was released, and it doesn't look like he has a court case. So they must have believed his story and let him go. But that's just kind of a, I mean, what an unfortunate chain of events, if that is true. I don't even know. Well, Market Watch says the best job of 2019 is a tax manager. Uh, these folks report a median base salary of about $112,000 a year. Meanwhile, despite the tight job market, there are 4,803 such job openings available nationwide. Tax managers work with larger businesses and organizations to accurately prepare taxes for the state and federal government. Um, the IRS is implementing a new program to track down those with back taxes. The federal tax collector will revoke or fail to renew the passports of those who owe more than $52,000 in back taxes. The FAST Act authorizing the move passed Congress in February last year, but implementa implement oh, implementation... I can say these words, I swear I can, but implementation has been slow. Now the IRS has announced it's working with the State Department to make good on the law. TMZ reports that a Seattle area man has been cited after being stopped by an officer for playing Pokemon Go on eight mobile devices at once. The stop happened Tuesday night. The driver was at a stop but was cited for distracted driving. The driver reportedly had a special contraption that displayed the smartphones all at once in a big panel. So this guy, okay, so do you mean to tell me that this guy's driving around with eight cell phones up in front of him or to his side, and, and, and cops are busting people just holding one phone, and this guy had the balls to drive around with eight phones so he could play Pokemon Go? Um, you know what? I would consider that distracted driving, and that guy definitely deserves a freaking ticket. Oh, shit, man. Okay, whatever. Um, things aren't looking good for retailer Macy's. On Wednesday, the company announced it missed quarterly profit goals for the first time in two years, according to Reuters. Uh, Reuters, actually. Uh, shares are down 18% for the nation's largest U.S. department store operator. Uh, heading into summer, it slashed prices on spring inventory, leading to a significant profit drop. Um yeah. Okay. So, I mean, Macy's is in trouble and I think, you know, we see every big brick and mortar store that's around, they're all in trouble. So, I mean, does it surprise me that Macy's having a hard time too? No, it does not. NASA scientists are using the volcanic geography of Iceland to test and develop its latest Martian lander, according to physics.org. A team of 15 started working there last month in a Labrahan lava field to develop a prototype. The vehicle will be similar to uh, Mars rover Curiosity, which is currently on Mars. It has two motors and is currently powered by 12 car batteries. Science told the AFP it's basically indestructible. Wired has a pretty fun feature about a California man whose license plate is null, N-U-L-L. It was supposed to be a compliment to his wife's plate, void. <laughs> but here's the problem. Many programming languages use the entry null, N-U-L-L, -L, when there's no value to enter. So anytime a cop didn't put in a license plate information, the citation was immediately connected to his car. Okay. <laughs> At one point, he faced $12,049 in traffic fines incurred by other car owners. Okay? So what they're saying is if, 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 a, if an officer was writing a ticket and if he didn't have the license plate number, maybe the car, maybe the ticket was because the car had no license plates, what they would enter in as the license plate was N-U-L-L -L for null. So the... <laughs> <laughs> so this guy happened to have a license plate that said null, and he is uh, getting all the tickets for all these other people that don't have license plates. A uh, total of $12,049. Poor guy. I, I, I think he needs to uh, do something else with that license plate, that's for sure. Russia has flown two nuclear bombers to islands close to Alaska. Well, Russia itself is pretty close to Alaska. Uh, the country's Minister of Defense acknowledged the movement was part of a tactical exercise, according to a Reuters report. Um, so, uh, you know, there's, they're saying that, you know, they're supposed to strike fear in us that Russians flew a bomber close to Alaska. But I think, like, in, in the closest tip between Russia and Alaska, it's only like a 20-mile stretch away. Uh, so for a Russian plane to be flying still over Russian land at 20 miles away from Alaska. I mean, that's close. So, 
uh, nuclear bomber flying that close to Alaska. I'm not even too sure if this is a adequate news story, uh, but it is made to strike fear in the hearts and minds of the readers of this story. So, uh, boo, get scared. Russia is flying bombers very close to us. Well, while serving a drug warrant in a northern suburb of Philadelphia yesterday afternoon, officers got caught in an hour-long standoff. Hours-long standoff. That's plural. The shooter hit at least six officers, all of whom have uh, reportedly been released from the hospital. At one point, two officers were taken hostage by the gunman. Those men were rescued by a SWAT team, but the standoff went into the night. One bystander reported hundreds of shots being fired. The man was eventually taken into custody before midnight central time. Okay, so there's a new report out about uh, Americans and vacations. Uh, The survey done by Bankrate says that 42% of Americans can't afford to go on vacation. One third say they would have had more means to do so five years ago. Another two thirds say they don't do recreational activities due to the cost. Uh, yeah, it's a, you know, it's, 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 it's part of the world that we live in. The rich get richer, the poor get poorer, and uh, a lot of people uh, can't afford to take a vacation. An Australian university says that the two best foods to live the longest are apples and tea every day. The data comes from 53,000 Danish citizens during a 23-year study. Those who had foods rich in flavonoid on a regular basis were least likely to have cancer or heart disease. So an apple a day really does keep the doctor away. So if you want something to snack on, uh, keep apples. My wife happens to keep apples in the fridge all the time, and I probably, I've probably i been eating about one apple a day. And so I guess I'm doing the right thing. So what was it? What was the other one? It was apples and uh, tea. And I drink unsweetened tea. So maybe I'm going to live forever. I doubt it very highly, but it, you know, it could be a possibility. It's not. It's, there's no way I'm living forever. Who are we, who we fooling? Well, I'll tell you what, since I was rudely interrupted by Mike Tyson multiple times during the show as I was trying to do the news, this is just kind of a bonus show. I don't know. Maybe I'm just an arrogant a-hole that just likes hearing himself talk. But, you know, trying to give you guys something to listen to on your way to work. Hopefully the Mike Tyson made you laugh. If it didn't, freaking sue me. I don't give a fuck. And that's up to you. Um, But like I said, if you'd like to support what we do here, you can definitely do that at patreon.com slash radio underland. Tune in next Tuesday for the Mandela Effect. And uh, I know I said this on the last show, but I'm pretty sure this is the last show I'm going to be able to do for this uh, week uh, due to my work schedule. If I get some downtime, we'll see if I can pick up a mic and uh, do another uh, daily news. But uh, for now, it's been fun. It's been real. This is Jake with Radio Underland. Follow all of our media. Give us a review on iTunes. That, that helps us out a lot, just giving us the review on iTunes. If you haven't done that, give us a review on iTunes. Uh, hopefully a five-star review if you want to help us out. If you want to be a dick, then don't even fucking leave the uh, you know review. Just 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 go along. But if you're a complete dick and you hate the show, then I'm sub- you wouldn't still be listening right now. So, um, yeah, check out the, uh, the last episode that was uh, Taxation is Theft with Daniel Berman. Uh, That's up on Spotify and iTunes and iHeartRadio and anywhere you listen to podcasts. Check that out. That was our last full episode. And uh, be prepared for next week when we talk about the Mandela Effect. This is Jake. This is Radio Underland. And you've been listening to the Daily Boring News Show. Yeah, your fucking show is boring, man. I don't even... I can't listen to this, dude. I fucking smoke my weed and I try to listen to your boring ass... Your boring crack ass talk about the news... I just want to fucking smoke more weed and just get away from you, you fucking cracker.